On Friday on this broadcast, um, I made some pretty strong statements about um, information that we would release. Well, it is now time to release it. The government has not come clean, nor has um, really any of the mainstream media. Some of this information has now come out over the weekend. Some of it came out in dribs and drabs uh, last week. And immediately the government tried to discredit it. Um, But we have sources, and I will tell you that while we are not the source of um, much of what came out... um, uh, you know the different uh, the different people. These sources, some of which we are talking to, are talking to others. We are not an organization that cares about exclusives. I don't care about being first. I care about being accurate. I also held this information um, as long as we could um, from you because I don't. I think it would have been much better if CNN, ABC, and NBC would have broken this, and I also think it would have been much better if the federal government would have come out. We received some of this information beginning on Tuesday of last week and began to do our own homework and investigation. By Wednesday afternoon, we knew it to be true. We have the um, sources and we have documents in hand. Um, uh, So we know we're right. Um, I warn you that... While some of this now you have heard, others, there are, I think, five different points in here that is new and exclusive. Um, I warn you that uh, do not go to just anybody for additional. Just because these things we can verify because we have the documents in hand does not mean that we go any further than this. Um, We have some other things that we are going to lock down Uh, In the coming days, we have some more tomorrow and the next day and probably the next day and into next week as we verify and also giving people in the government and the media the opportunity to tell the truth. The reason why this is important to me is this information will only divide us even more. I told you uh, on Friday that I thought I... I had reached the bottom of my trust level with the government and with the media. Oh, no. No. No, I haven't. And um, now the government is out and out lying to you. They are engaging in uh, a disinformation campaign to discredit and destroy. And some of our sources are under threat of uh, 20-year prison terms for speaking to members of the media. I can just tell you that there are brave Americans that are at the highest levels that are begging you to listen and to take action and call your congressmen and call your media centers and say, why aren't you doing something about this? While the media continues to look at what the causes were of these two guys, there are, at this hour, three, three people involved in the bombings in uh, Boston. The first one is the, is the one we're going to address. You know the other two, they were caught on Friday. But the first one was caught on Monday. And we don't know at this point, I can speculate, but I won't at this hour, I can speculate, and I bet you can draw your own conclusions as well, as how he was involved. But we do know that he was involved. You can ask yourself this question, how many times does lightning have to strike in the first place for this guy to be at the scene of the crime and in the hospital and not involved? On Monday, following the bombings, A Saudi national was taken into custody in the hospital, having been injured in the blast. This is according to two FBI sources to the blaze. They used the term in custody. That evening, his Revere apartment was searched and property was taken out, according to an NCTC source. NCTC is the National Counterterrorism command center, so I don't know. It is, this is, these are the people that 
Make sure everybody's talking to each other. This is the group that makes sure that everything is coordinated. It is the main center. In exclusive timeline details now, the next day, Tuesday, the uh, NCTC issued an event file. An event file is very important. An event file means we have a terrorist. An event file uh, calling for his deportation using Section 2123B. If you listen to me on Friday, the reason why I said three, I said he's a very bad, bad, bad man, was to send a message to those in the Department of Homeland Security and in the administration. We knew he was a 3B um, status. 3B is about as bad as they come. This is somebody, if you get a 2123B tag, it means that you have uh, demonstrated yourself to be a proven terrorist and engaged in proven terrorist activity it was created by the ntc field watch commander at 4 p.m and he was tagged at, as a 3b these documents are time stamped who actually tagged him as a 3b we are not sure we know the field commander or the uh, field watch commander is the one who entered it who which government agency said he's 3b we don't know but we do know this it is almost impossible to charge someone with this it is very very difficult you need solid evidence because this isn't something that one group says hey 2123b all of the departments have to agree that that evidence is strong enough to ta- to tag someone 2123b It has to be almost certain proof and evidence. If any agency that is part of the NCTC disagrees with the charge, it cannot be applied. It's very important that you understand this is not something that is riddled with mistakes. If you had a 2123B, if one person objects and says that's not right, You are not allowed to tag them with that. It's a huge burden of proof. It is the equivalent in civil society of charging someone with premeditated murder and seeking the death penalty. So nobody called up and said, hey, 2123B, put it on, and we'll take it off later. Now, Tuesday, this happened on Tuesday. As soon as that happened... Tuesday morning, Secretary of State John Kerry meets with the Saudi Foreign Minister, Saad. The meeting is abrupt and it is closed to the media. Tuesday, after that meeting, the FBI starts to backtrack from the suspect, saying he's no longer a suspect, he's a person of interest. Then he's no longer a person of interest, he's a witness. Then he's a victim, and then he's a nobody. Wednesday afternoon, the president has a chance encounter with the Saudi foreign minister Saud again and the Saudi ambassador Adel Al Jabir. They say this was about new developments in Syria. Do not believe it. Exclusive now from the Blaze, updated information. Wednesday at 5.35 p.m., the file, the 2123B, is altered. This is unheard of. This is impossible in the timeline due to the severity of the charge. If, if these things did happen, which they don't, if this did happen, you don't one day put a 2123B charge against somebody with deportation and then the very next day take it off. It would require too much to do it. The order was that the deport or uh, the uh, deport order was rescinded. The and this is critical that you understand. There were only two people that could do this. The director of the uh, NCTC could order the change after talking to each department after going to the FBI and the ATF and everybody else and saying, hey, you know that evidence we had, here's evidence against it, et cetera, et cetera. 
Only the department could do that by running everybody through and making sure that everybody signs off. Impossible to do in such a short period of time. Or somebody at the very highest levels of the State Department could do it. We don't have any evidence to tell you which one did it. Thursday, Janet Napolitano testifies before the House Homeland Security Committee that no Saudi national has been or was being deported. This goes ex- directly against the order that we have in hand. Exclusive information now from the blaze. Congressman Duncan is in possession of the original event file along with members of the House Homeland Security Committee Congressman King, McCall, and Miller. They have sent a formal letter of request, which we have a copy of and and is now posted at The Blaze, for a classified briefing on the Saudi national and the deportation order. The Department of Homeland Security needs to answer Congress. Another exclusive now from The Blaze that was just reported on um, uh, Fox Radio. Let me read it from Fox Radio. The Saudi national who was initially detained and then ruled out as a suspect in the Boston Marathon terrorist attack had been flagged on a terror watch list. Let me report. Had been flagged on a terror watch list and was granted a student visa without being properly vetted. A source close to the investigation revealed that Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi had been deemed inadmissible under a section of the Immigration and Nationality Act which declares ineligible for a visa any alien who is engaged in or is likely to engage after entry in terrorist activity. At least two additional sources have confirmed that Ali al-Harbi is sent to be, uh, set to be deported as early as this week, contrary to statements made by Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano. Thursday of last week now, going back to the Blaze um, report today, Thursday, DHS and ICE told the media that there are two Saudi nationals, and it's the other one, not the one hospitalized for injuries suffered in the bombing. That's the one that's in custody and being deported. We would respectfully ask for any kind of evidence of that. Who is this second Saudi? There were no names, no pictures presented. The fact is, an event file was created for one Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi, indicating that he was deported for terrorism activity, activity, clearly stated on the event file for the Boston bombing. If there is a file that has been created with another Abdul Rahman Ali Al Harbi in mind, don't you think we should know about it? Also, exclusive from the blaze, this Saudi had a student visa. This Saudi's student visa specifically allows him to go to school in Finley, Ohio. He has been in this country now for six months. We cannot find any evidence that he is in Finley, Ohio. He has an apartment in Boston, Mass. If this is a case of mistaken identity, then who is the person named in the file with the same name, with the 3B charge? If DHS was working with a person as a source to out the bombers, then why is there a 3B charge? Exclusive. Why, why wasn't the Congressional Committee on Homeland Security notified? Why are they being cut out of all information This is protocol. We're working on the family connections. And there is more to come. Sources tell us 
This will most likely now be kicked from DHS to the DOJ and labeled an ongoing investigation that just cannot no longer be discussed. This will be the reason Napolitano will not answer the Homeland Security Committee's request for a briefing. Like Benghazi, they have a heavy disinformation campaign floating a variety of scenarios to confuse the media, but that apparently doesn't take much. To prevent the story from being pursued, mistaken identity, wrong Saudi in custody, they are also working very hard to discredit those on the scent. I will give you more information on this in just a few minutes, but I want you to know, I need you to call your congressman right now. There are those congressmen that are aware of this, have seen the documentation. They're in the Homeland Security um, Committee. They know. They have seen it. They need your support. They need your help. If the American people do not stand up and they do not demand justice to be done and they do not demand information on where this Saudi is right now, Our sources tell us there's one of two things. He's either on a plane tomorrow or he is already gone. We want to know where he is. We demand answers from the Justice Department and from this administration. You call your congressman right now and you ask them, are you aware of this, this information? If not, talk to the Homeland Security Committee. And if you are not on top of this and making this your first priority today, I want to know why. Call them now i will give you more information and why this is happening and also the media and how they responded behind the scenes coming up in a few minutes if that sounds like um well we don't know what we're talking about if that sounds like we don't have our sources well then media i don't know what you need um so you know um and the american people know we had not only did our staff, our our uh, president of information and content and news on the blaze, not only did he reach out inside of these monolithic corporations of the mainstream media and say, guys, you know me, this is right. We also, because we don't care about an exclusive, we care about the truth, we also had sources that we had reach out inside of these organizations to trust people that they trusted. And we asked them to call and say, you know us, you know, you know who I am. I'm, I'm one of the sources. It's right. And there's no interest from the media. Why? Because this government has a relationship with Saudi Arabia that it, it, it is time to be exposed. And we begin to do that next. Many exclusives that are breaking now on The Blaze. Um, The uh, lead story is Saudi national question in uh, Boston bombings, allegedly flagged on terror watch list, um, and so much more. And there will be more stories coming out uh, today. But for anybody who uh, wondered about what was going on with Benghazi, uh, and what that was all about, this, I believe, this is my opinion now, this is not the facts that I just gave you, this is now my opinion, I believe this is an extension of what was going on in uh, Benghazi. Um, let me give you, let me give you a real quick recap. There are three suspects now. One is being dismissed. The first one was the Saudi uh, kid that was in the hospital. We will be giving you a timeline and some additional information tonight at 5 o'clock and things that you can do to actually help. I warn you, if we do not stop our government from lying to us on this one, this again is just a continuation of what they did to us in Benghazi. They will first ignore then try to discredit. They will discredit. Well, Glenn Beck, he never has his facts, whatever. They will try to discredit, then they will try to confuse, and they'll do it three days here, five days here, pretty soon. No one will be talking about it anymore, and something else will happen. This is extraordinarily critical to understand, because while the media is looking for, why did these crazy kids go out and do this? 
Well, we can tell you why. Islamic terrorism. Islamic extremism. Period. But it is not just about these two kids. On September 13th, 2001, to show you the pattern of this government and to show you that this is not this president alone, we've just gone into hyperspeed. On September 13th, 2001, two days after 9-11, Prince Bandahar bin Sultan had a private meeting with President Bush in Washington. Shortly thereafter, Although all private flights were grounded, planes began to round up the Saudi nationals from various parts of the U.S. Within one week, 140 Saudis, including members of the bin Laden family, are flown out of this country, having never been interviewed or questioned by law enforcement. It is happening again. For three years, the White House and other federal agencies insisted that the flights never took place, the Bush administration would later block the investigation into the Saudi involvement in 9-11, even though 15 of the 19 hijackers were Saudis. They would eventually uh, force the redaction of 28-page chapter, uh, uh, chapter of the 9-11 Commission report regarding foreign, specifically Saudi support for some of the al-Qaeda uh, hijackers. The pages still have never been seen. According to the New York Times in 2003, Prince Saad, who met with Kerry and this president just last week, were dispatched to D.C. over concerns that classified sections of the congressional report on 9-11 would remain classified. This scenario is playing itself again. January 14th. This is very important that you understand. January 14th of this year, our president met with the minister, the Saudi minister of interior. Two days later, Janet Napolitano signed an agreement with the Saudi minister allowing trusted traveler status on Saudi student visitors. What does that mean? That means if I'm going to school in Finley, Ohio, I now appear to our system as a Canadian. If I am coming from Saudi Arabia, all I have to do is swipe my passport. They're not going to ask me. They don't have to take off my coat. They don't have to do anything. I'm a Canadian. I'm a Saudi. So you know, France and Germany do not have this. So you know, Israel is on the list, but no one in this administration will sign that document. This is trusted traveler status that we don't give to some of our most trusted allies. And we gave it to Saudi Arabia last January. So if somebody is going to Finley, Ohio, and they're on a student visa, they just walk into our country. No questions asked. Here are some questions that need to be asked by the media. Where is the Saudi kid who is in the hospital? Is he in the country right now? If so, where? The person you say is the real kid that's being deported. Where is he? What is he being deported for? Why was there a 3B terrorist activity filed on the Saudi national in the hospital? Who was the person who decided that a person with that name was subject to a 3B? Why was the file altered on the 17th? What and who found the information that changed the status from a 3B? Why did the FBI confirm that the person in the hospital was the same person the file was created on? Oh, did I say that out loud? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. We have... We have the information. Why are we deporting anyone from the city of Boston while still at the crime scene? What mosque did the Saudi kid attend? Oh, the one that is the Muslim Brotherhood mosque. What mosque did the two brothers attend? Oh, the Muslim Brotherhood mosque. For all the media members who reported an arrest had happened, and they got it all from their personal sources that they trust, did they follow up and ask why that person of color 
was gone and why all the misinformation and why they got that story wrong and why there was a bomb threat that distracted everyone to get them away from the police and the courthouse? Why was the Saudi national on an F-1 visa to study in Findlay, Ohio? And why didn't anybody check if he had actually made it to Findlay, Ohio? Why was he in Boston? Who altered the file on the Saudi national? Why is Fox News Radio the only one that's really giving us any of this information? Why is a U.S. citizen, the Chechnya bombers, a U.S. citizen not read his Miranda rights due to public safety concerns, which means that can only be invoked if something is imminent and they believe more people are involved. And yet this Saudi with a 2123B is allowed to get on to a plane. This government has been in in bed with the Saudis for a long time. We will give you more information on that as the days continue. But in Libya, we covertly helped helped the Muslim Brotherhood, the radicals. Ambassador Stevens became the official liaison to the Libyan opposition, later linked to Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood. We then began running guns to, Syri- to Syrian rebels, which, are, which is the Muslim Brotherhood, through Turkey. Last December, in something that the media just refuses to look at, the vice president of CARE here in Dallas, Texas, and his little sweet school teacher of a wife left here to go to Turkey. The next month, he became the head of the Muslim Brotherhood rebels in Syria, the organization we have been running guns to in Syria. This is a freedom-fighting organization, if you happen to be with the Muslim Brotherhood. I would describe it as a terrorist organization. Why is that not of interest to anyone in America? In Egypt, we funded the Muslim Brotherhood labor unions, and nobody really cares about it. The labor unions were the same people that took to the streets and kicked off the revolution. Hillary Clinton basically admitted to this in an online interview. Clinton's response was, quote, Well, as many people know, the United States supports a civil society inside of Egypt. Quote, we gave grants to the gov- that the government did not like supporting labor union organization supporting organizing on behalf of political opposition to the regime that goes back many years we're not at war with terrorism because terrorism doesn't exist what we are at war with is al-qaeda and hear me clearly any other group that saudi arabia cannot control saudi arabia saudi arabia is um the number one funder in the world for the Muslim Brotherhood. Abul Abdul Rahman Ali Al Harbi. His clan is heavy with Al Qaeda links. He came here to this country under a student visa. He could be around a lot of easily corruptible youth. You see what Al Qaeda used to do? They can't do anymore. They used to train them and send them in over here. But if you're from Yemen, you're under scrutiny. But if you're from Saudi Arabia, you no longer have that scrutiny. So you can come over here when somebody will send some youths over to our country for any reason whatsoever. And then the Saudis are there to welcome them. I believe this man in the hospital his mission was to recruit fighters that are already in the country that way they can't be tracked crossing international borders once he recruits then he could fund and provide the go order when the time came these two that were captured and killed on friday would have been easy targets for an al-qaeda recruiter hailing from chechnya being muslims themselves they would have been sympathetic 
During the first Chechenian war, Al-Qaeda set up several training camps in 1994. They were funded, what a surprise, by charities run by Saudi Arabia. The Al-Qaeda links are too much to ignore here. Al-Harbi would have jumped at it. Someone needs to find the connection between these three. I would start maybe with the mosques and the social media connections and the hangout spots, but I don't expect anybody outside of our audience and bloggers who want to tell the truth to actually take the time. May I suggest, before absolutely everything is wiped clean, if it isn't already, that we start looking at social media connections, their hangout spots, and find the connections between these three. What are the odds that a guy who has a 2 on 2 3 b just happens to be at the finish line of the Boston Marathon, cheering for his favorite Kenyan runner, and so excited, and then just, oh, he was trying so hard to keep himself clean, and boom, the bomb goes off. What an odd, odd thing, and I can see why Janet Napolitano and this administration would have a hard time explaining it.